Good evening, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the show. And just when you thought Sunday night show was something, talking about <coughs> Gavin Newsom putting this uh, this person into the Senate, man, just less than 48 hours, the Republican Party, with some Democratic votes, have voted out the House Speaker. So the title of this show, you guys, is The Games Politicians Play. Um, it's very important to know, not just for the party that you may support, but you need to know who the players are and what a lot of the infighting within the parties that's going on. It's major power struggles. Uh, I have a personal view, and tonight we have Dr. Short. And uh, all I can say is, <laughs> be prepared. <laughs> What's up, Dr. Short? Yes, um, I'm fine. I want to wish interracial sexual relationships to everyone there to bring <laughs> peace to the world. Because, you know, you know that's <laughs> what we want. Do you know if if folks wanted to like uh, like if let's say there was a war, like a race war, mm -hmm. and these people wanted like peace and they wanted the black army to fail. It's promised everyone that laid down their weapons and interracial relationship, black folks wouldn't have an army for five minutes. It'd be like two or three people left. And it, it, they wouldn't even have to get it, just tell them they go get it. They'd all just lay down their arms. Damn, I'm gonna get me some. Shoot, I'm gonna get a couple of Christy Brantley, Marilyn Monroe, Paris Hilton <laughs> type, you know, high class woman, right? It, it would it would all and all the sisters, we're gonna get, you know. Well, he'll be more coof than Donald Trump, but just as much money, and then all resistance would be over. <laughs> well, Dr. Short, we we did a show on Sunday in reference to Gavin Newsom naming LaFonza La, La, La La Butler, the, the, up, uh, Butler. The, the senator that's going to take over for Feinstein. And then, senator spelled S-I-N-A-T-O-R. Mm -hmm. Say it with an I. <laughs> and and it came out basically, and we had the article, and then it's funny. She's already been out. How, how the CBC was upset, and they wanted him to take it back and put Barbara Lee in. And then oh, okay. you know, 12 the hours later. The, the Congressional Black Circus. Okay. So then 12 hours later, we you know, I we had already had the article. They kind of made the article like disappear, but it's still out there. And right. Gavin Newsom on his website has all everybody, you know, praising him for this nominee. So a lot of people may not understand what goes on in the, the Democratic Party. You got the the Clinton. Short sort of wing against the progressives. The Nancy Pelosi still in the wing. She's not a House Speaker, but Nancy Pelosi is still running the show. Gavin Newsom is a relative of hers. Actually, Gavin Newsom is related to Feinstein as well. Yeah, he's and he's the nephew to Pelosi. Yeah. Um. So how's he related to Feinstein? I didn't know that one. He's a, he's a double cousin. Okay, I can see he's that. All right. Both sides. And um. So we see that. that uh, by the way, I'm going to give you a shout out for that genealogy. This is something I try to say to people that a lot of times people, uh, these connections that we black folks in particular, we really suck on, you know, we we want to be allied to everybody and, and we don't even know amongst ourselves who we're really connected to. You know what I'm saying? It's uh it's quite interesting. You know, I just ran up checking my DNA connection and got a third cousin. I hope I hear from her. Uh, and I think, you know, we have the same great grandfather that uh, passed in the Civil War. So, would explain how she could be like my third cousin, right? Mm -hmm. And or something like that, that or third or fourth cousin that would make sense if he's three generations back, 
ta 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 or four generations back, right? Then that would explain it. And so we're, we're, we need to look at how connected we are. And, and folk act like this doesn't mean anything. It really does. Okay, I won't interrupt yeah, you. Keep yeah, going. Yeah, you're, 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 you're exactly right, Dr. Short. And I know that every time we talk, you always encourage myself and other people uh, to, to find out who you are. Uh, and it's not just about <clears throat> the reparations claim, but just knowing who you are connected to and knowing who you are. And it's very important uh, nowadays with all the single parent homes and everything that's going on. We, at one time in our history, we knew who we are and now we're getting away from knowing who we are. So a lot of people in the Democratic, that, that aren't really familiar with what's going on in the Democratic Party, it is the old guard in this progressive movement. Basically, Nancy Pelosi a couple years ago told that squad bullshit to be quiet. And you really haven't seen them since she told them that. Because behind the scenes... You see, oh, I got the press is big ahead. Yeah. And uh, you, yeah, you do that big um, She looks like the, the genie. Remember Geno's? You're from New, you're from New York here. Remember Geno's? Geno's and the Geno, the genie. <laughs> Yeah, if you want something yummy that's really delicious, just rub your tummy and make a wish. Well, we make a wish that her ass lose. She just barely want to see back. So it was, you know, you know. I wish she'd get a wig. I wish she'd be more intimate with her husband and honor him by something on that dig, naughty head. That thing looks like you know a, a doorknob, and mm -hmm. around you know, and lying about the boys being secure. I mean, what's what's not secure is a wig that's falling off your head or the alopecia that you got. Okay. <laughs> so Go even even in the, the Republican Party, you have a you have a, a side of the Republican Party that some people may say is more radical, radical to their brand, radical to their core. So McCarthy basically gets <laughs> Is like, yo, McCarthy, you too soft with the Democrats. You're supposed to be our leader. We tired of your stuff. So they voted him out today. And a lot and a lot of people think that this is a good thing. Uh, Dr. Short, drop for a second, you guys. He'll be back. A lot of people think this is a good thing, you guys. So that's what we're talking about. We're talking about what's going on in Washington in regards to the Republican Party and the Democratic Party. And how it's a game being played. And as you can see on the flyer, is Trump the real comeback kid? You back there short. Mm -hmm. And you know, before we go any further, how many people in this dab room? There's 23 right now. How many people have liked it, y'all? No, we, we shouldn't have to repeat this. You know, it's like you have to take your clothes off to have sex. You need to like this show. Before we start, now like it and share it. We need to have each time we get together. And we've come a long way together, all of you in the room. Um, uh, we've gone from four people to 908 in just three months. That's good. Without paying for views, it's all just been raw, straight up interviews talking. And not even going after the cheap, easy shit. We could talk about sexy reds, ratchet ass. <laughs> we could we could talk about the black woman that got lynched in Orlando. And or, I don't or mind. The I don't, or the congressman that just got carjacked. Oh yes, uh, we 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 can do the white dude that got stabbed to death on this uh, by a black dude in New York. We could do the black guy who got the double black eyes who got the beat down in Jacksonville. We could, we could, we could. We could talk about fit and fresh. We could do the easier, more interesting stuff, I guess, for certain people. We really could. But we're not going to do that. We're, we're really not. And it isn't because we can't. It's because... Um, I worked in the news, and I'm going to just tell you, at every news agency, more or less, 
especially television. Uh, people need to get to work about 8.45, preferably 8.30. Not because, it, and if, unless you have a certain beat, a beat is like a certain uh, type of area, of subject area, story area. So if you had like a political beat, you would follow politics. Some people do the courts. Some people do health. I mean, that's... But for television in particular, uh, a lot of the news and stuff, you know, unless it's political, a lot of stuff doesn't happen exactly that early in the morning, although some things do. Typically, it's a little after, maybe a lot of the meetings are at 10, 11, 12 o'clock, and stuff is basically over about 6, 6 o'clock. Typically, you don't have a lot of stuff. If you ever watch news, it's sort of like what you see at home is not different from what it's like to work in a studio or at a station. But typically around nine o'clock, nine o'clock, they have a meeting in the morning and all of the head people and editors and so forth and the staff come in and they listen. And what they do is they all give their reports on what's happening so anything happening in uh, foreign affairs and the person says, well, there's something in the China Strait, but we don't know. Well, we'll hold on that and perhaps we'll add that to, you know, to the like the news summary, but we don't have to go into depth. And then, of course, the, 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 that's from the little people. And then the big guys say, well, I talked to our counterparts at MSNBC and at CNN and we're all going to talk about uh, we're going to talk about the flood in New York. So we're all going to do flood New York. We're all going to do, and basically the news that you get is not the not the complete news, but what was agreed upon by the people that determine what you'll know by all agreeing to talk about the same shit. Meaning no matter how big something is, if they aren't interested, for example, a story that I helped break out was the story that the CIA was dumping drugs in South Central. Even though I work for a news group, they said it wasn't news. We don't want this story and it's not news. Doesn't matter how serious the public was about learning that the CIA is dumping drugs and getting people killed and it's contributing to gangs. We, we're not going to cover it. And it took a whole lot of pressure and then someone eventually broke it out and it became a news story. But they didn't want people to know this news. And they said it's not interesting. It's not it's not newsy, whatever that means. No. And so until some other people picked up on this Gary Webb story, a large number of people would not address it, no matter how sexy, no matter how hot. They all had an agreement. This will not be a news story. It isn't news. We said so. A lot of bad things have happened to black folks that you'll never hear about because the gatekeepers and the influencers and the power brokers have no interest in you knowing what's going on. And they all get together and say, we're not going to talk about uh, black people's homelessness exploding across the country. It's not news. We're going to talk about the migrants and what we're going to do for them. We're going to talk about the illegals and how we're going to help them. We're not going to look at the fact that people are losing their medical benefits in Texas, but the people that come into Texas illegally get medical assistance, but not people that are paid into the system. It's not news. We're trying to be different. If there's truly a new black media, or at least people that are trying to influence the black public, we don't allow 
other people to tell us what to think or we don't want to copy or compete or do what other people do. We do what we do the way we want to do it, which is a true jazz and improvisation is that we aren't trying to withhold stuff from people where we want you to know and to think about a little bit more than And that's real news, but that's not what you get if you watched on television. And if you turn across the channel, they're almost all doing sports, weather, and all at the same time. That's not by chance that they all have it almost sequenced to the minute. You can go from channel to channel, and they're all doing about the same thing. That is a choice. That's control. That's not... uh that it just happens that way that's deliberate that you can't really get a different story even if you change the channel because they're all saying the same thing so like if i talk about the missing children ohio look at all of these major black platforms and how they're not talking about it all at one time that's no different from what you'd get from the racist white media and the old stuck-up boule media. So, and you can do something about that. You can like this. Everybody needs to share this, tweet us out, uh, spread this around, let people know uh, Brother Q needs 92 more subscribers so he could go live if he wanted to straight from YouTube if he ever wanted to. He also needs a thousand because that's our gentleman's agreement. I wouldn't abandon him until he got a thousand people so I can like, uh, you know, go and get a loaf of bread and never come back on this platform again. <laughs> but he would have his thousand people. And I, you know, I didn't screw him. I didn't, I didn't abandon him. So we want to get that thousand. I want to thank all of you for each one of these last shows. Last three have gone to the number that's acceptable for this size platform that we got a thousand views within 24 hours of this show uh, uh, going live. That's good. It used to take a few days. Now it happens in one day. And so we want that. And we're going to keep doing stuff. I want to let you know I've got to. Uh, this program's going to become more integrated. We're going to be doing more of this stuff. And we'll be going live. And it's going to be. We're literally. What, what are we going to call ourselves? United Brothers. The United People's Media, whatever we're going to form, yeah. because this seems this seems to be an other people have a cabal where they agree to just do the same shit. I want to get a group of people. If you do programming, maybe we can figure out how we can work together. I may not come on your platform, but I may not mind giving you or letting you use some of what we have or we figure out what we do. But we we need something that covers stuff. We, we need people that cover, like, you know what? The dude with the Mexican girlfriend named Phil that does the Africa Diaspora Channel, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, people give him hell because he has, like, a taco for a woman. But he does good stuff. And he does what he wants to do, and he does all kinds of stuff. And he does it on a global basis. And, you know, he could be a better spokesperson. But I think he's been doing this right Brother Phil's been doing it right for a long time. Would you agree with me, Brother Phil? Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, Brother Q. I give a shout out to Brother Phil. He's been true to, and his, his platform looks gorgeous. You know, um, I, I love what he's doing. Uh, you know, it, it could be more, and he could work with more brothers. That's the criticism. How come we brothers don't like, you know, we only want to work with women. That's bullshit. That's another reason says I work with this because we need to show that black men can work together. Uh, I'm not a bitch. I don't want to be a bitch. We black guys should be able to work together. We're gonna have. We're gonna need to have a damn army. 
uh, black girls and folk getting their asses beat by foreigners, just jumping their ass and kicking the fuck out of them in public places. And the people acting like, in fact, this happened to little black women. Black women getting their asses beat and stuff. And it's not black men. And it's interesting how the authorities don't want to do anything. We black men better get our asses together. It's about to get rough out here. So forgive me for this little commercial, but y'all need to like this damn program. Like it. Like, like, like. And we're going to just do a commercial early. Y'all need to donate, support this brother. If he told you he needs to get another computer, he needs maybe two or three or four terabytes. Um, when you start doing this and people want it to look nice and all, the minute that you want that, you want our stuff to look like what you watch on television, it begins to cost money to do it. The software, the things to give you the effect of what you have in your plasma television when you're watching white people lie and call you niggas and go back to Africa. When we're saying you have a home here and you want us to compete with them, we have to have the infrastructure to produce, to put up the graphics and so forth. It it begins to cost money. Am I lying, Brother Q? All of a sudden, damn, I've got to buy this to get this look. People wonder why I do well, One, I don't have this kind of mixer or that. You start needing all these things in order to, because our people are spoiled. And then again, our folks are counting on uh YouTube and other people to notify you. No, you should come looking for us. Anticipate that at least every day or two, we're going to do a video. Usually, usually, Dr. Short, which is interesting that you brought this up, is I always tell people, you know, if you want to know when we're going live, just to email me and I will create an email list and they'll get an email. A lot of us, like you said, we take for granted <clears throat> that we'll know. And it but that YouTube will tell them. I mean, what the hell is that? I mean, it, we do a lot of things that are irrational. We say that there's bias in media and bias in social media and then expect it to work. It's like sending your kids to school with and Biden as a teacher and expecting the kids to not hate being black. I mean, so proactively be active listeners don't, and, and, and if you're getting something from this, share this with some of your sorry ass friends. And even people that don't like this, um, we get feedback from people all the time. I, you know, I, I get it every now and then. I hate you, Mr. Short. Fuck you. Now I love you. <laughs> I used to hate you. I thought that you, you know, you were just trying to like create a hate against white people. It's amazing because I don't even talk about white people that much. I think where they get that shit from. Anyway, and it says, you know, I started listening, realized, you know, you're not saying anything that I couldn't see myself. Well, exactly. We never said that we're geniuses here. We said that we're just keeping it real. Usually, so please, yeah, just so like this. You might ask the question, but uh, about me. Go ahead, ask a question. We 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 could because we gotta get. You know, we had to do some damn house cleaning because we were supposed to do that, brother. When we start off, remind people. We, you know, yeah. you're such an earnest brother. We just go into it. Other people with the bigger platforms, God bless them. They start hustling for you to like it. So, you know, we're so trying busy to to do something. We don't do business. We do work oh, and we're gonna have to do a little more business so that's why yes like this share this take a second to share this come on everybody out there that can share this send us a message i've shared it that you, we need to do this in twitter you, we need to, like to put this out you got the notification do a thumbs up and, and and send it out share it out because there are people that want to know need to know, didn't get alerted, and, and they do unsubscribe people from platforms. It's 35, and, it's 35 likes and 51 people watching. Okay, so that means that about, what, 15 don't like it? What are they here for? Okay, so they just want their feelings hurt. Okay, so, well. So you guys in the chat, one of the things um, somebody asked me, I, I do use the community section a lot. 
a lot of stuff Dr. Short will send me because Dr. Short will see the information and will share it, and I'll share it in the community section. That's that's not an issue. Um, one of one of the biggest issues for us, and I will say it, the the biggest thing for anybody that's on YouTube is liking and subscribing. Um, like Dr. Short said, the donations go to research, the donations go to books or or computers. I have a, a, a pretty decent computer, to be perfectly honest with you guys. And mine's a piece of shit. <laughs> so I'm looking at one, I'm, and it's not going to be brand new. I'm going to get, I have, I just had, I'm going to just tell you what happened. I took my macbook pro i i had a problem i was going to do some genealogical work i'm overdue for two things i was going to get this genealogical work done and my computer wouldn't boot i was like damn call them uh we reinstall the operating system it's told to take a couple of hours before things work a couple of hours pass after it reinstalled and the thing was acting really crazy. So I called and I says, hey, man, I hope I didn't lose my data. I don't want to lose. I got all this stuff in the computer, blah, blah. And uh, he says, well, maybe you erased this. Says, I didn't erase anything. I thought I did exactly what the man told me and he couldn't help me and it wouldn't work. And I did hard reset, soft reset, this, that. So they gave an appointment. I went to the Apple store. I get to the damn Apple store. And, of course, they racially discriminated against me. They told me to get there at 1230. I got there at 1205. And um, they asked me to sit down. They said, well, they hadn't finished at 1145. And you know what? They didn't get to me until literally uh, 2 o'clock. They served everybody white first. And I got up and asked someone, are you guys intending to serve me or what? Because I got here early. And by the way, there's a bunch of tethers working there and gays, let just tell you, black gays and, 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 and black tethers. And they helped everybody else first. <laughs> okay. And, and when I asked, it's almost like they were intimidated that I came up after I had sat there, I didn't do anything. All the security were black. And uh, and some of the people there were black, but they all look strange, rings on their noses, tattoos, and all. It's just, ah, uh, DC, it's weird. And this is why I don't even like leaving the house, you know. Um, the worst part of gentrification is the black people that stay after they've, like, driven out the other ones. So then they grow that, that, that have managed to hang on or the ones that can't go anywhere. I don't know which one's worse. But while I'm waiting, my computer... I just decide, well, let me look at my computer. And the shit starts working perfectly. And then I'm feeling like stupid, feeling, feeling like a woman in technology. You know how women, like, like they don't, their computer's not working because they didn't plug the shit in and they have the repairman and he's just doing all this stuff trying to figure out she never does, never push the on button. I know you've had that experience with, with someone female where they don't like, they're like, I don't know what they do with technology, but, you know, I'm not saying that there aren't women that aren't techn technologically savvy, but I've seen some women do some strange stuff with technology. It's just, damn, the shit's not plugged in. Oh, I knew that. And after you had everybody panicking, right? Instead of saying, you know, you know, I've got a dildo for a brain and I just expect shit to work. Like when, you know, you buy stuff from the store, you know, as a man, you have to put the shit together. And when a woman buys something from the store and it's in a box, you mean I have to assemble it? Well, damn it. What did it give you assembly instructions for? Anyway, so I, I felt like a woman like that. And I was like, damn. Well, let me just have these bastards see me anyway. And that's when the Jamaican dude told me, well, it takes 24 to 48 hours for your system to install. Meaning I was told a few hours, not 48 and the, but the one thing I did learn was that my computer, which I thought was a 2015, that's what these bastards sold it under, was a 2012. I mean, that this shit is 11 years old. I thought it was eight. Um, <laughs> so shit. Well, I, I, mean, told you, I, I told you what happened to me. On Friday, I, have, I was doing some, uh, some, re some research on child trauma, childhood trauma. 
and I'm about two feet away from my printer. And, it, and it's ringing busy. I'm like, why the hell is my printer ringing busy? What the hell is going on? So one of my Comcast buddies, he always says to me, whenever you have issues with your internet, just reboot your modem. Okay, I did that. Still doing it, still doing it. I do my, I talked to you on Friday. I think we did something Friday. It still was messing up. So then on Saturday, I went to Jersey, got back from Jersey, and a friend of mine, she says, why don't you just unplug your printer for about an hour and maybe it'll start working. <laughs> I unplugged it. It started working. Okay. And and so, yeah, but that, but that also all these things come from just you, you need your stuff to work in order to do what you do. Yeah. So uh, I've got to get... I'm going to get a refurb. I, I think the price for Macs are outrageous, but Macs are excellent if you get them. They're excellent if you know how to use Mac, and they last forever. Yeah. Black one. And um, so that's about so go is to get a new one the next month. And that way, as we do this stuff, stuff to be a one that's no more than three, four years old. Because they can do all system. You can get at least 29, 29. Dr. Short, your sound is coming in, coming in funny. You know they're doing something to the stuff, Ken. Okay, well, they do that. Well, what can we do? We're, yeah. we're going to, I'm going to get a new microphone as well. I'm going to get a microphone and put it. To, to, I'm serious, but I I'll have to buy that too. Yeah, I bring it back. I do got an HP printer, but I only um, we don't use our printer in my home uh, too much. I use it enough, um, but it just goes to show you you guys are right about it. I, I Doctor Short has a uh, he does Apple. I'm a team Android, as they say. I have Android phones. Oh, I yeah. do have I have an Apple phone. I have a an a a Mac uh, a Mac an Apple tablet. So I have a tablet, and I also have a, another thing, the Mac thing. Someone got me that. One of my supporters got that, and I'm going to be making more use of it. Yeah. Um, but I, I just started using my iPhone. Uh, I, I I have a I, my iPhone is even old. I have an iPhone 11. But if I get this thing moving and folks do the right thing, then I will get an updated iPhone and I will get some other things. That way it, it looks nice and it's done better. I've got to get a banner. So once I get this stuff, I'm going to actually have a banner for background that will have the Angry Blackman's book club thing. I'm waiting. I've got to reach out to my artist for my Coon Buster uh, design. Because, oh, yes, we're, we're, we're going to catch up with Brother Phil. And I'm more articulate. <laughs> anyway, that's cool. Uh, <laughs> but, but like this, share this. We've been keeping it real the last few days, and we're going to go back to it. And, uh, and we're going to really talk about this political thing from a Black perspective the way that we need it to. And, and we're going to enjoy it. And, with, and, 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 and by the way, it's really funny because um, I really love the comments when people say, you know, this is really good, but I wish she wouldn't be so vulgar. Um, the vulgarism is a, is, is a trademark, friends. When I talk to Brother Q, I don't think I use uh, vulgarism every five minutes. Do I? I don't think so. No. If you had, no. Uh, no, we, we have a certain audience. They like this. And if you don't do it, they aren't listening. So for all the people that want to listen to the National Public Radio uh, and you want to watch uh, uh, Amy Goodman, who gets it right half the time, listen to them, please. But there are a lot of folks who just wish they could hear the news like Biggie Smalls was reading the news. Can you imagine Biggie Smalls? Two motherfucking cops shot someone. <laughs> 
can you imagine if the news were like how we talk about stuff? It 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 would be both amusing and also sad because still some of the stuff would be bad. You know, these two policemen, they, they, they were shot. We don't quite do it like that, but we, you know who you're listening to. And by the way, and I love doing this, none of our white listeners ever complain about how we communicate. It's only aspiring, climbing, bushy type black folks who whine about how we talk. It's never the white people. The ones that you want to get with, enjoy it. You're so busy trying to be like them, you don't even know what they want. You know about Richard Pryor because white people made Richard Pryor a star. White folk bought those records more than black people did. I'm just being real. You know about... You know about Motown because white people bought the records. We tend to be reticent getting behind one another. And I'm not saying most of our listeners are white and we don't do our shows to appeal to a white audience. We do our shows to communicate to our own people. And uh, folks are curious. In fact, they find how we communicate interesting. Um, they don't want to listen to black folks talk like white people on the news. That's why they're listening. <laughs> and I don't, I don't get any complaints from, um, from them. It's only a certain type of black person that wants to be accepted. So you guys, Speaking of that, you know, I, did I tell you, I have a friend, I won't say where in the world, but I hope that, you know, People in Africa, please stop using skin whitener. It it just oh God, I'm so sad. I'm besides I'm besides myself. I, I I'm I'm gonna send you a picture and I'm not but we're not gonna put this up. I, I don't out friends, I don't do that. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get into it. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be good. I'm I'm gonna coon. I'm See, certain people, they, you know, they don't know us, brother. A lot of stuff we don't say anything about. We do mess with public officials because they're, or pubic officials. They deserve to be messed with. I do, I'm vituperative against people who call themselves black leadership and don't deliver. But if it's an ordinary person, don't bother them. Even if I don't get it, just leave it alone. Um, so, anyway, like this, you know how to contribute to this. You know that there's a Patreon for me and brother. You know, do I have to show you how to do a Patreon? You know, they're pointed here. It's got a lot of information there. I know you know how to do this technical stuff. <laughs> you need to have a Patreon. So at my Patreon, what is it? Is it Dr. Randy Short? It's kind of easy to find it. Um, I, I know that um, we both use Cash App, which... And by the way, um, a lot of times people, I, I know I have like friends all over. We a lot of times help other people uh, between me and my fellowship. We may do something for people. We have followers in other countries. Just try to uh, hit people up if they have a thing or point something out to them. But I'm Dr. Randy Short. So dollar sign Dr. Randy Short. And if you like Zell. You can send a Zelle or PayPal to wrandyshort at gmail.com. And people ask questions in the chat a lot of times that are atopical. If you had my email, why not ask me directly versus like disrupt the floor of the show? That's crude, rude, uncouth, unprofessional. You wouldn't dare do it to a white show host. Because even if they didn't use the N-word, you wouldn't want them to think of you as an N-word, even though they already do. <sighs> and you are Let's Talk too, so you can sell me, you could PayPal me, you could Patreon me, you can uh, PayPal, Patreon, Cash App, and, and it doesn't have to be much. In fact, Patreon is cool 
I want to thank my four contributors. I, you know, I've had a, we've had a Patreon account for about five years, and I've only had Patreon. Uh, I've only had like, I had my first one within this last month. I never really uh, did much, but in order to go to war, and it's going to be war. Facebook is messed up on uh, four of my accounts. That, trust me, when we start putting this political stuff out, I start having all these problems with my Facebook accounts uh, because they don't they they don't like what we're talking about. And so this is the other reason why you have to do stuff. It's things that you don't know about, like people hacking your computer or this or that, because they don't like what we're talking about. You may think of it as insignificant, but um, we're, we're going to talk about resistance resistance against oppression, uh, like in countries when people get conquered and what they do is they kill off the smart people when they eliminate all the communications and you can only listen to certain things. Um, the Nazis came to America fools. And so you have a lot of Nazi type people and they, under the Nazis, if you had a newspaper that they, they just killed everybody, they just shut it all down. You can't have any other thoughts. The people here are similar. You may imagine you have freedom, but if you have a thousand stations or a thousand platforms talking about sexy red, you don't really have a choice. If everybody gives the talking points of Simone Sanders or Donna Brazil or uh, what's that pumpkin head, jack o lantern Negro or Roland Martin, you're not really being given a choice. So, um, believe me, and I know this for all the people who have platforms that say anything, they give us problems, viruses, you name it. Just take your, just take your damn platform. You make the wrong crack of mad and they've got the ability. So they shut you up and it isn't me so much. I'm not saying this to help me. It's to inform someone else. And we have to acknowledge here, some of us know more than others. Some of us see things other people don't. And apparently there is a aggressive conspiracy to make certain that people don't know. And make certain that nobody can tell you. So when you assist people who are going against the system, when you help them, that enables them to help you. And uh, Brother Phil has done a great job. Uh, Professor Black Truth, a lot of them are doing great work. We need even more platforms doing it. Black Authority does excellent work. Tariq and them do excellent work. Vicky do excellent. I said do. I like that. I know it does, but I said do. Vicky do good work. We, and, and I don't mind what's this called, malapropism or malaprope or a splitting an infinitive. I know the difference, but it's a lot of fun when you talk like your own people. In fact, um, it's like a lot of black people don't like the word reparations, but they like MFM or motherfucking money. That they respond to that differently. And so for the respectability Negroes that don't understand, um, you can go and say one word to a black person and they would never tell you that they're offended by the words you're using, even though they're not insulting words. They feel like you're talking down to them because they can't spell or pronounce the words you're using, even though they have an idea of what they are. They would rather you make it very, very basic if you make it too high, they hold it against you. And see, so we have this, how can I say, it's uh, called uh, hegemony. And so, you know, I can use these little snooty ass words. Look it up, I'll spell it. H-E-G-E-M-O-N-E-Y. We have an issue of hegemony. And you can look up who's the person that... Uh, came up, his name is Antonio Gramsci, he's an Italian communist, Gramsci, G-R-A-M-S, 
C.I. Antonio Gramsci. You can look him up. He came with the concept of hegemony. And it's an, it explains how the people in power control, systematically control everything. In fact, the best example of hegemony he used was the Roman Catholic Church, which controlled every aspect of life. And so hegemony is a concept of complete cultural, social domination of people by one group of people, by others. We black people deal with hegemony, white hegemony, or white hegemonic, a white hegemonic system. And I'm just bringing this up because we are counter hegemonic and we're fighting against cultural things like them using what I call dick hop because there's nothing hip about this shit that they're doing anymore. You, you have to do something that's counter to the, the prevailing norms of people who don't like us. <laughs> and there's another thing that we're dealing with within hegemon hegemony. You have a thing called bifurcation. I'll give you this difficult word for all of you that are not in graduate school. Bifurcated as B I R F U R C A T I O N bifurcation. Uh, did I do that right? B I R. No, it's B I F U R. C-A-T-I-O-N, bifurcation. And this basically is a smart-ass way of saying a divided mind or double identity or split identity or um, how could we say a type of social schizophrenia that uh, we black people have. The folks who can't deal with curse words or whatever they call curse words, if you say shit, damn, piss, pussy, ass, uh, they can't deal with that. But if you say vagina, penis, anus, rectum, right? Fellatio instead of blowjob. If I say it like important, educated white people, now that's okay. You know, if I say a uh, finger fuck, that's rude. But if I say come digito, that's all right. Because rich, powerful white people say come digito. No, they don't. No, they don't. If I say skin abrasive sex versus fist fucking, it's okay. <laughs> okay. If I say, you know, that's foundational or that's basic versus saying that's axiomatic, which I could lose your ass using, or I could talk about the uh, how black people are peaceful and have humane, or I could say the black humanistic heuristic which would fucking confuse most of you I choose not to speak like that I'm, I'm trust me I'm real, I, I, can, I can switch modalities I, the little bit of languages I know we could just go into a different language I could care less hey Dr. If, Short, if, yes sir I need you to check your phone I just sent you some. Um, it's you pertinent to our conversation. It's pertinent to what we're talking about. We're about to talk about. Uh, well, send me to the other phone, please. I sent because it to what? The, no, no, no. Send it the to other the phone? other number. Yes. Because if I come off here the way things are weird, they may cancel this shit out. Oh, excuse me about that. Apologize. So, you guys in the in the chat, Doctor Short is explaining why he uses the, the 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 words that he uses, and this and a lot of people may not understand, but there's a method to it. Some will get it, and some won't. Mm. Um, for lack of better words, what, what we're going to discuss is what's on the flyer. Right, we and we're gonna get to that, and so we can do. It's it could be called populism or populistic, or we could say shit talk. 
because you got. And, and, and you get what I'm saying? Or we could say hoi polloi. I mean, we could do that, but you wouldn't really like it. People wouldn't like it. I, I My whole life, I've ended up being around. Uh, my dad and mother work with people who are from the slums and from people who are rich. And you bounce back and forth between the extremes of class. It's like, damn. I have to keep changing the way I talk when I get around people or people, well, not the rich people, the black folks would trip off of communication mm. because let's be honest, we're very insecure as a people. And we're very quick. Oh, you don't like me because I'm this shade. You don't like the color of my eyes. You don't like my hair. Why do you, why do you try to impress me with these big words? I'm thinking, shit, I thought I was just talking to you. Then if you, uh, then if you just use regular street talk, uh, is, that, is that the only way you could talk? Uh, we're, we're psychotic. And so I'm an old man. I'm going to say what the fuck I feel like saying the way I want to do it. I don't work for other people and I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to kiss people's asses. And... Um, I don't know as much as people pay the rappers, some of them who are bushy, who haven't been poor a day in their damn life. You pay for them to cuss and scream and insult women and do degenerate things. If you can make that a billion dollar industry, then people can deal with us speaking, you know, plainly. OK, so what is this happening? Uh, um, oh, wow. Look at this. <laughs> Yeah, oh my god. Wait, 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 wait. What is that? <laughs> um acting speaker orders. Oh my god. Oh my god. Wow. Um wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Let me look at this. Hey y'all, you know, play some music, dude. I need to look at this. Oh my god. I just oh, I love white people. God, I love white people. <laughs> Oh, God. And you know, you know what's interesting? That punk ass nigga. This lets you know who's in charge, doesn't it? <laughs> that lets you know something. <sighs> hmm. So you guys in the chat, we're discussing. Uh, the events that happened within Washington and California in the last two days. House Speaker McCarthy was voted out of his seat and uh, he is a Republican. Uh, so what are you guys' thoughts? If you know what's going on, if, how do you feel it will affect the black vote? How do you feel it will affect you as uh, a voting citizen if you do vote? As well as Gavin Newsom has put <laughs> Alfonso Butler in the Senate seat that Feinstein was held. Hmm. Okay, we can stop. <laughs> we can stop. We can stop. We can stop. Okay. That's awesome. That's awesome. You can turn the music off. Oh my God. <laughs> Makes me want to holler. Yes, I love it. White people fighting. This is a white food fight. This is like a keg party where they all pull the girl's straws off and run the train on her. And no one says anything. <laughs> well, we're just, oh, this is wild. Okay, so, uh, all right. So, how many people? We have our 30 people. We still have 50 people. Or did I bore them using all these big ass words and shit? Okay, we have we have one person says they now now you guys we're gonna do the show a little different. We're gonna respond off of what you say, and we're just gonna give our thoughts, right? But we want to stay on topic. And if you have any questions for Doctor Short, just ask the question, and I will start a question, and we'll ask if it, if it's on topic. Yeah. If it's off topic, no. Well, okay, a drag queen can't ask a straight dude for sex. 
we're having a conversation about politics. You're not going to ask us about something that has nothing to do with what we're doing. I mean, you could do that with someone else's platform. Marcia yeah. said, I can't stand Matt Getz. Hmm. But, but who says we like Matt Getz? <laughs> why? Why? Who says you've never heard us say anything like that? That's no, she so. She just said she okay, can't. Good. Well, no, you're not supposed. You're not supposed to like these people. What are you gonna do? Have sex with them? You're probably too old. You know he likes young people from the little scam that came out. These people aren't likable. I live here in D.C. They're they're nasty. The, politics is nasty. It's like a girl who doesn't, you know, doesn't take care of herself. The kind that need like a fistful of Noraforms, and you know what I'm talking about. I mean, they would rather buy beer than some mass and gill. So, let's said, start, I so they, no they, they, I have they, no confidence in any. We are networking. You're not supposed to like gets. Some of the I know that work with gets said he didn't have the votes. They're people in shock that it happened. So maybe all the people he gets high with, or maybe they have some porn in common. I don't know what it is. But he got eight Republicans to go with him against McCarthy's ass. <laughs> now, let's, let's just do this, because, you know, we know that Gates... The one thing I do like about Gates is that he was harassing Al Sharpton, which is really a lot of fun. Al Sharpton's a, he, Al Sharpton was, you know, him and they were arguing. And so we don't have to like these people. It's not about liking anyone. This It's not a dating game. It's not an orgy. We're not in a hot tub. We're not eating uh, cream cheese. Uh, we're not having cheesecake with people. This is the survival of a people that nobody likes. And what Gates just did, and I, I mean, I, I, it's that white people want to fight each other. And I keep saying, please stay out of other people's affairs. They won't like you no matter what you do. In fact, they will hate you all the more if you get in the middle of them fighting. And they already hated you. So let them tear into each other. And perhaps they'll be exhausted. They won't have a lot of strength to come and mess with us. And the proof and the proof of that, you guys, is an article that we just saw where the uh, interim House Speaker basically uh -huh. threw Nancy Pelosi out of office. Oh, he threw her out of her... out of Yeah, see, they do things... Some of that white privilege. Acting Speaker McHenry orders Nancy Pelosi to vacate Capitol office. Please vacate space tomorrow. He said, get the fuck out, bitch. <laughs> and he did it purposely because they know it's Feinstein's memorial. You know, <laughs> and you know, Nancy, and Nancy Pelosi traveled with her body. I hope she wasn't holding her boob with the casket lid open, like clasping that thing. That's the part she's gonna miss the most. Anyway, um, <laughs> okay, that slipped. So Nancy Pelosi is gonna be at Feinstein's funeral, which means that these people are gonna box her shit up, which she has the authority to do, and and put that shit in a storage area. And and that's gonna be wild. And you know Nancy Pelosi's old, so her staff probably went with her. So for for, for those of us in the chat that may not understand, it, when you when you when you have this type of change within the Republican Party, and I don't like to use the word radical, but for the sake of the conversation, I use the word radical. Now they have the radical part of the Republican Party as the speaker again and they're going to probably vote for You mean the interim speaker? 
So what's happened, there are two factions of the Republican Party. Let's do this. We have the Trumpican uh, wing. These are people who follow Donald Trump like he's Jesus. And then you have the rhinos. And, and the rhinos stand for Republican in name only. They're really Democrats. And, and then there's a subset of rhinos called the brinos, black and Republican name only. These are the coons that go whichever way. These are the coons of the Republicans that won't ever say or do anything for black people. Even if Donald Trump's talking about giving black people stuff, they would never ask for anything specifically for black people. They're basically a Republican version. These are black Repub Democrats who, 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 who get a career hustle off of being Republicans because the Democrats don't need black people and the Republicans need uh, some window dressing, right? It's the same way, you know, the Klan probably had black people pressing their sheets. What's happening is that when these people have power positions, like Nancy Pelosi had a power position, these people do all kinds of favors and such for each other. Nancy Pelosi gave up her position as Speaker of the House to Hakeem Jeffries several months ago. But Nancy Pelosi has continued to use uh, an I lost you, Dr. Short. Hold on, you guys. Hold on. Ebony, I don't know. I don't know what MD stands for. Vengeance for Cali and MD. This is nothing to do with California and MD. Actually, it's a totally different party. In that war in the NPC with Republicans and the Democrats. Guys, Dr. Short will be back shortly. <clears throat> this could. <sighs>
Now McCarthy got voted out for some other stuff. He ain't wanna comply. You know how the Republicans do each other down the lay down. Yeah, you guys, Dr. Short will be back shortly. We just had a little technical problem on my end. Uh. You're in, Dr. You're in Short. Dr. Short. So, I don't know when I drop off because this thing happens and you don't notice it. Hmm? I can hear the background noise in your phone. Background noise. Hold on. Hold on. You close. You gonna have to close it out. You gonna have to close it out. He'll be with it shortly. You guys, one thing about those phones is that if you have, sometimes if you have it open and you have your microphone, I don't know how much you guys know about your own phone. <clears throat> if you have your microphone open, sometimes it will still be open even when you're on a phone call. Yeah, Dr. Short. I got music. Can you hear it? Hold on. Yeah, you good now. Now. So, the Trumpicans and the Rhinos are fighting. Mm hmm The Trumpicans and the Rhinos are fighting, and they may ultimately... They may even put Donald Trump in as Speaker of the House. This would absolutely change the American political landscape. It may even create a situation where it's going to be harder for people to mess with Trump as Speaker of the House. You guys understand what he, what Dr. Short just said, that it's a possibility that this, because the wing, the, 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 it's not the rhinos, it's the Trumpicans that actually run, is going to be running the house now. Yeah, the Trumpicans have hijacked the house. If <laughs> Donald Trump, if they were to get him to be the speaker, to agree to be speaker of the house, which they have the option to do. Donald Trump would be in charge of a significant part of the government. Donald Trump and them could investigate people. It would be wild. It would be so wild. They could, this impeachment thing, can you imagine Donald Trump being Speaker of the House pushing for the impeachment of Biden? Someone asked, how could he be Speaker when he doesn't have a state? He doesn't have to. They have house rules. He doesn't have to be a member of Congress to be Speaker of the House. (laughs) 
this is crazy. They have white folk write rules so they can cheat later. <laughs> it's sort of like girls that mess with the dude that looks like you. So in case you get pregnant, you don't think that the kid's not yours. They, they, they just have it all figured out. They, 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 I mean, so they're thinking. I don't know exactly what it is, but they have been talking about this for a while for Donald Trump to be speaker. And let me say something to you. Even if they didn't have Donald Trump, if they get a, a, a trump again as a House leader, it's on. The other thing is that you've got Fetterman who's in bad shape. I mean, he's a bigger vegetable than the Jolly Green Giant. Okay. Um, who else is going to drop dead in the Senate? Those people are older than the jam, uh, than the Appalachian Mountains. Okay. So right now with Feinstein dead, and now you got this stud up in there. And see, she's only going to be there for what? A year. She's got like, she's got to start. If she, she has to declare, she's got two months to say whether she's going to run for the Senate seat in California. And if she runs, that means that your friend, we're looking at crazy Barbara Lee. Are you? I don't think you have Barbara Lee up in here, but Barbara Lee and others that want to be senators, you could end up in a strange situation of having a person that's Republican give them a major run for their money in California for the Senate seat. Maybe not in California, but you might. You could. It, things could happen. I don't know who or how or what. Now, let's just say that Nancy Pelosi, we have her ugly face up in here. Nancy Pelosi, who is old, she wants to run for her seat. And she'll probably be able to get it. You know, if her husband can stay out of trouble and not have people, you know, like have fights with men in his drawers in their house. Hey, Dr. Short. Because yeah. of because the, because McCarthy is no longer the House Speaker, will they go after the president now? Yes, you know that he was like uh, dragging his feet on impeachment. So I think that they're going to push for a full tilt impeachment for Biden, which would be so nice. I don't like Biden. That's right. I'm biased. I hate him, and you do too. And if you don't, you're stupid. Uh, and also, this is a, a rough thing because, you know, um, they're after Hunter Biden. There's a lot of stuff that could be done to Hunter Biden. And McCarthy has been, like, defending the Bidens, defending the Chinese, def uh, hasn't raised all the hell that he could do about the damn border. Do you realize now this border stuff is going to be on? started tomorrow it's war <laughs> and let me just say this to you what the speaker of the house does is he sets the agenda of what gets to the floor if these people know what they're doing they can have a whole bunch of bills and things and by the way you understand that now that McCarthy is out we're now faced with the shutdown. That deal is gone. The government can shut. They can shut this bitch down. That means the government workers won't get paid. It's, it's just they're about to jack up. They don't care. But what they really want to do, I'm going to tell you, this is some white nationalist shit. It's the wonderful how white people love each other. And we say, well, they don't love us. No, damn it. We're supposed to love us. Stop being angry at what, for people in other groups liking one another. Love the group your ass is in. And if you don't have a group, make one. Uh, they want to stop the war in Ukraine. 
they see it as a vicious white on white war that's bad for America and it's bad for the white race. And if, if they get what they want, this will be no more funding for Ukraine. If the Ukrainian war ends, and it will end because the money, if they cut off the money, Ukraine will collapse. And the European countries don't want to pay for this damn war, which means that Putin will win. He'll be one of the strongest people, greater than he's ever been. On top of that, if you stop the war from Ukraine and you get all this garbage off, the truth is going to come out and that's going to point back to Burisma and the Bidens. You have to understand that if you cut off the aid to Zelensky, the people in Ukraine don't like Zelensky anymore. He's repressing all the churches and everything. They may bump his ass off. You may end up getting a pro or at least a a less pro-Western leader to replace Zelensky in Ukraine. The European nations, Germany, France, Italy, Hungary, Romania, Poland. By the way, I don't know if y'all heard, but Poland is refusing to supply military equipment to Ukraine because Zelensky has been dirty with what they've been doing with uh, agricultural production, dumping it in Poland. So that's one thing that's going to happen. The other thing is that they're going to go after immigration. They're going to go after this impeachment. They're going to go after Hunter Biden. They've got the stuff on Hunter. And in case you've forgotten, Marjorie Taylor Greene has pulled up pornographic pictures of Biden's son in the hearings. These people have the dirt. Don't be surprised. Hmm. So uh, Gates, you don't have to like Gates, but Gates likes Trump. And uh, Gates may have just put himself in position. <coughs> well, he definitely became a major player right now. Yeah, yeah. and he, he felt that he was crazy. Now you've got a new issue. On the Democratic side... Now that you have these Republicans that want to fight like hell, Hakeem Jeffries, Donna Brazil, Simone Sanders, uh, what's this dude's name? Uh, Jamie Harrison, Kamala Harris, <clears throat> and, and this woman Butler you're going to see a reaction against the Democrats in a more aggressive way. And you're saying he's a sitting man at uh, Ebony. Man is spelt with two N's. If you put it up there, make certain that you spell it right. Um. This is going to be interesting. I believe Nancy Pelosi's health will suffer if she starts feeling the stress of these people because if these folks want to fight, it's on. Donald Trump is still ahead of his opposition by over 50 points on the Republican side. We are in the month of October. You need to know that the first primaries take place in January. So that's where eight, seven, basically the first primary is about like eight weeks away.
So it's not that long before the primaries come. And this is the month of October. It's an October surprise. <laughs> and Gates isn't poor. Don't be surprised if they don't come out with more things. Don't be surprised if you don't see more. Um, and McCarthy is finished for now. You will see more. Now we've got those two no good black women in the corner. You also need to know that Kamala Harris, by many people seen this, ineligible to be a U.S. vice president. They may go after and investigate her and find out where you know what her status is which means she may not constitutionally even have the right to be vice president don't put it past them to ask or investigate her remember if they want to get rid of mitch mcconnell too it's taking kamala harris as the one holding back the Senate. When it's 50-50, she's a tiebreaker. If they get her out of the way, <laughs> if you get her out of the way, they can do whatever they want. I would say pay attention to Lindsey Graham because Lindsey Graham said if, if <laughs> what they're doing to Trump, it will be retribution. <laughs> so what do you guys in the chat think? Don't care? Let them fight? It don't affect you? You know what they say, if you see my enemy, two of my enemies fighting, just let them fight. <laughs> Do you consider them your enemies? <laughs> Glitch McConnell. <laughs> Fight to the death, I say. Pre prepare, observe, buy ammo. Shoot, they start, they, they're coming for your constitutional rights. If they had their way, it'd be more stricter gun laws. Yeah, Marcia, the streets are going to get ugly. I put it, the link in the chat of the congressman getting hijacked, I mean carjacked. Y'all know why that happened. Streets got to eat. <laughs> Let them fight and get what you can out of them. I don't even know if we'll be able to get anything out of this one because, like Dr. Shaw said, that wing in the Republican Party, now they might bring uh, H.R. 4321 on the floor. So we got to be very mindful what what the games is going on and how... Everybody in that Republican Party or that branch of the Republican Party is going to try to push to get their stuff through. I'm going to get, I'm going for my license soon. Let's pack up the family. Yeah. Anybody got any questions with Dr. Short? Dr. Short, you still there? Oh, I'm here. Yeah, yeah I see you guys' comments. Uh, I'll just start putting them up. Anybody have any questions for Dr. Short? 
just uh just ask and pertaining to the topic, please. Oh, Ebony, what up, Alec? <laughs> Alec, log cabins, and Emily's list. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I don't see no questions. Uh, Dr. Short. Yeah. You have any final thoughts? Well, yes, I do. What I want to say is this, because we can repeat this. The games that people are going to play will be a scorched earth of people trying to destroy one another because people who really like Donald Trump are now going to go all out to take down the other side. The games that are going to be played, it's going to be a game of I declare war. And it's ongoing. And once they consolidate their forces on the Republican side, they're going to give Hakeem Jeffries hell. I know that they want to get rid of, 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 of uh, Mitch McConnell. Mm -hmm. Okay. So with that, you guys, we're going to close out for the night. Remember, like, share, subscribe. Remember to support the channel. And we'll probably see you guys tomorrow night or either Thursday night. Hold on. Oh, and before we go, we have to say this. Um, we have Nimone, Simone Sanders. And you got um and you got Donna Brazil. They're already and you've got Jaime and you've got uh and you got Kamala. They're already blowing smoke up black women's asses. Simone Sanders had a show that failed on MSNBC. They brought her bald-headed ass back up to try to get her because they're trying to figure out what to do. Now, you know, if, if, her, if, her, if her bosom was the politician that get my vote, but not her fat mouth and not the clothes bus cut Marine Corps hairdo, hairdo. I mean, you need to look like a woman, not like an outcast from Paris Island and or Camp Lejeune. And so, you know, she they're trying to roll all these people out to try to get black people to support Biden because black people, the ones that aren't stupid, are not down for the bullshit. This is a big part of this is black people. And the other thing you have to understand is Donna Brazil. She's someone that looks like she's, you know, dropped a pancake on the floor and wants you to still eat it. The one that's behind the King Jeffries, he's the one with the bald head, this light skin. Um, the DNC had their, their, they're looking and they don't have enough people that are black and otherwise, but in particular, they don't have enough black people representative and their uh, Democratic National Convention that's supposed to endorse Biden to be president again, and his ass can't get up a flight of stairs. So everybody's in panic damage mode to try to hold on to because um, Joe Biden just like the Titanic with tor torpedo hits in addition to the iceberg. Black people aren't feeling the Democrats. It's not the Republicans are doing a good job, but the Democrats are failures. There's a generational shift and putting out an old, um, uh, what's her name? Donna Brazil, who looks like the, like, uh, the head of the, remember the head coach for the uh, Georgetown Hoyas? I think his name is John Thomas. Yeah. She looks like John Thomas with the with the with the with the perm, with the cream perm, you know, a positive perm that Natalie Cole used to sing about. She does look like John Thomas. But she's <laughs> not touch. She's not touch. 
putting all these feminists and black lesbians and man-hating women, this shit's played out. Putting another stud in the Senate was this woman, uh, Alfonso uh, Butler. This shit's not making nobody vote. The sun has set on pork chop, uh, radical feminist pork chops. Pork chops. That shit's over. We need a check. We don't want a condom. Okay. They've been giving us condoms. We have enough. We got bowls full of it. People are going to fuck no matter who's in power. But we're not going to have power if we don't do the things to get it. And none of them has made a commitment to reparations. Uh, the person that was kind enough to tell us Barbara Lee is anti-reparations. They're trying to come up with the game to get black people back with them. And it's not going to happen. Hakeem Jeffries, when you look at the fact that that uh, Nancy Pelosi has all that office space, you know, that means that Hakeem Jeffries doesn't have all the space he needs as Speaker of the House. I'm sorry, not as Speaker of the House, but the House Minority Leader. His ass has had to have less. So who's really running Congress? It's still Nancy. The black dude there, again, is just another dick ring. He's just another sex toy. He's just another jackrabbit. And the real power is Nancy. You see, she doesn't have to hold the office. Remember, Nancy Pelosi has the book full of all the sexual uh, activities and sex exploits and crimes of all the people in Congress that have been there for any length of time. And she can destroy any of them through political blackmail or just having the Washington Post or the New York Times scoop and just show who went to Epstein's Island or who snorts dope, who's screwing their kids, who steals, who's doing insider trading. She's got all that business and she can destroy anybody that crosses her at any time she wants. So they're trying to make it look good with this bald-headed, Dr. Evil-looking Negro from New York who doesn't like black people. And it's failing. And uh, this is a great time for black people to be empowered because white folks are fighting each other when they're divided. If we truly had some leadership, and we most certainly don't, we have traitors. We don't have patriots for the black people. So what I want you to get from the games that politicians play is that there's nobody playing a game for us to be winners. This is Dr. Randy Short saying, you know, we need our motherfucking money and none of them is trying to bring anything home. We have a golden opportunity. If there's going to be an ongoing conflict between two different points of view among white politicians and the white masses, we have an opportunity to consolidate our position and save ourselves from being erased by illegals and so forth. So we need to thank the, even if they're racist, the only people helping black people now are racist white people, not because they like us, but because they want an America that they came up with that is very different from what these communist uh, Democrats want. With that, you guys, remember, like, share, subscribe. Until next time, we're out.